Infancy is not confined to just living things. Ideas start small, simple. Companies, industries, they're not exactly one and the same as people, but there are times where they go through a similar trend of maturity and growth. Well, at least my example does, which is good enough for the video. It should come as no surprise to anyone who's watched my stuff before that I am a fan of Crash Bandicoot and Naughty Dog, unless you've only watched my Mononoke video. But if you have happened to watch my first video, then you'll know my love for Crash goes back to a young age. Oh, and if you haven't watched that video, oh god, please don't. To some, it was one of the first games I loved on the PlayStation. I was probably four or five years old, so it was perfect. Even the name Naughty Dog is silly and infantile, and one that the founders had to fight to keep upon Sony's eventual acquisition of the company. Those goofy cartoons where everyone would get hurt, and it was bombastic and fun, that was Crash Bandicoot. Run and jump, spin, fall down a pit, get flattened, burnt, frozen, cut in half, inflated, it was kind of like Looney Tunes. We wanted to not make it look like a video game, exactly, in the way the video games looked like at that time. Like, to not be as video game, we wanted to look like a Looney Tunes cartoon. I wrote this before I saw that interview, so now I have this self-satisfaction of being right, but it is good that their attempt was not in vain. The story was almost non-existent, so there was nothing I had to focus on. It began development in 1994, the same year I was born, and you could argue was when my development began too. Before anyone argues that that would have been when my conception happens, I, shut up, that doesn't work for my script. The company was small, and the game was simple, and it was easy for me to swap between the Tasmanian Devil spinning around to Crash spinning around. Coincidentally, both are slightly anthropomorphized marsupials, and I suppose that helped the transition. Through Naughty Dog's entries into the franchise, the tone remained the same, but it upped the ante each time. Crash 1 was kindergarten, straightforward, few mechanics, I could count to 10. Crash 2 and 3 were introducing more mechanics, and I was starting to learn more complex concepts. Crash Team Racing was a whole new ballgame, as was Multiplication, and it was able to keep me going a few years into the 2000s where I'd eventually play their next franchise. Much like Crash, I didn't play Jack and Daxter until a few years after its 2001 release. It was the first game my parents got us for the PS2, and without a memory card, I played the first hour or so countless times. But it seemed both Naughty Dog and I were ready for something more. But not too much more. A lot of Crash's identity remained in Jack and Daxter. A goofy orange animal, a voiceless character, a similar moveset with the spin and dash, and the general cartoonish design. But this time, the story became more prevalent. Rather than Looney Tunes, the comparison is to something more like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Transformers. Not deep, thoughtful stories, but something with a focus that a nine-year-old can enjoy. A bad guy, and a good guy. Around this time, I'd also moved out of Scarborough to rural Ontario, where I had now the freedom to move around outside for once. This coincided with Jack having a much more open world compared to Crash, where you were mostly confined to moving forward in a straight line. If you haven't caught on now, the point of this video is reflecting on Naughty Dog's growth along with myself, and no, I never said the comparisons wouldn't be very silly. In an interview with Jason Rubin, one of the founders of Naughty Dog, he spoke about the focus groups for Jack 2. Kids as young as 10 would say that the game seemed good, maybe for their younger siblings. These were kids that the game was targeting, and it wasn't sticking. Rewind two months prior to the release of the first Jack, a game called Grand Theft Auto 3 came out. Fucking Jack and Daxter turned into Grand Theft Auto. <sighs> Once again, I had this portion of the script written far before I saw this donkey video. God damn it. Due to that release, kids that young were trying to seem more mature because they wanted to seem fit to play something as adult as GTA 3. This was true for myself. I watched my older brothers play it, and them not letting me just made me want to seem more and more grown up. What this led to was Naughty Dog changing the design philosophy for Jack 2. It now had a free roam city, you could kill civilians and steal vehicles, there were guns, there was police, there was a gritty, rundown city run by a tyrannical leader. Simply because of GTA 3, Jack 2 had a large jump in maturity knowing kids wanted to be seen as older. While there are arguments to be made about originality and such, this ended up being a great thing for me. Following the trend, I probably played it around 2 years after its release, making me 11 years old. It may have copied elements of GTA 3, but it kept a similar art style despite the grittier looks, and it was still a cut below GTA in terms of maturity. 
This way I could pretend I was old and be satisfied with what I was playing, and of course the game definitely had its own identity. Just a quick aside, but an interesting note to me was that in the same interview, Ruben remarked that Jack had no voice in the first game because he felt like the main character having a voice would make them seem like less of an avatar for the player. This is something I would agree with for RPGs like Skyrim or Fallout, and given the response of Fallout 4 having a voiced character, it seems many people agree. He decided he was wrong about that, and Jack now had a voice in the sequel, a game inspired by GTA 3 where the main character was still voiceless. This means nothing, I just thought it was an interesting tidbit. Jack 3 followed a similar trajectory, a new map with its own issues, a more cutthroat, free-for-all desert. It was mostly a bigger, badder version of Jack 2. Likewise, Jack X marked a pattern for Naughty Dog, with the fourth release being a racing game before moving on to another project. Like Crash Team Racing, this took me into the next stage of my life, and what I would consider uncharted territory. <laughs> go from Looney Tunes to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, where do you go next? Indiana Jones? I don't know, close enough I guess. Crash went to Jack, where the world was more serious and the characters were more human. The next reasonable step is to take on something actually human. In terms of tone, a PG-13 adventure more focused on storytelling is a good move forward. Broken record and all, I played Uncharted fully through in 2010, some bit over two years post-release. I was in high school now, and was beginning my own little adventure. I was pretty into writing, and stories were becoming my favorite parts of games. Not that I even loved a lot of them, but it was my favorite part to think about the most. With its focus on characters and relationships, Uncharted was the perfect game for me. While it took a big visual step away from Jack, it still had humorous, witty dialogue, guns, and puzzles that relied on some sort of mysterious ancient magic, although the fantasy elements of Uncharted were played down. Crash even snuck in by way of homage, where Nathan Drake runs towards the camera from a boulder. Mentioning Indiana Jones was no accident, of course, as I imagine the boulders in Crash were homages to the film to begin with. Dun dun, just like in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Since Uncharted has switched to real people, the amount that you kill certainly has a different effect than killing monsters or human-like people in the prior games. The game itself is more easily relatable because of the realism, so you can put yourself in Nathan's position. That's the case for me anyway, but that again comes back to the parallels with me. While that angle of this video is partially just for fun, so it's not just a history of Naughty Dog video, there is some genuine truth to it. Not just the happenstance that their games upped the ante around a time where my maturity had reached a similar point, but things like high school being the beginning of a journey, like Drake searching for Francis Drake. The journey itself is not comparable, but the idea of one is, and saying it now, it does sound silly, but it felt real at the time. Naughty Dog stuck to their guns and Uncharted became a trilogy, capping off with the fourth being a spin-off racing title. Wait, what? Uncharted didn't have a racing game? What the f- Unfortunately, Naughty Dog broke the tradition and I'm still waiting for my Uncharted kart racer. I can forgive it because they at least did the trilogy part and certainly didn't go on to break the tradition even further. Ultimately, Uncharted 3 came out early into my final year of high school. His last adventure was over, my high school adventure was over, and it was time to move on into the real world. When I was younger, I thought maturity meant sex and violence. The more of those you had, the more mature it was. Now, from a literal meaning of reaching adulthood, there is some amount of unnuanced truth to that. This was still the case when I was 19, the year The Last of Us came out. Gone were the days where I had to wait two years before I played Naughty Dog's games, and I played this one shortly after its release. Crash marked my young childhood, Jack marked my pre-teens, Uncharted marked my teens, and The Last of Us capped them off and sent me into adulthood, moving out of my parents' house months after the game came out. This is what I thought peak maturity was, an ultra-violent, brutal world where no one can be trusted and you have to survive on your own. This wasn't necessarily what I believed the real world was, but it was the most adult thing I could think of at the time. If killing people in Uncharted was mature, The Last of Us was maturity's magnum opus. While I'm framing it in a way that makes it seem like I don't think The Last of Us was mature anymore, there is definitely maturity beyond the edgy kill everyone concept. It dealt with complex relationships and loss in a very punchy way. Baby.
It took after Uncharted in some gameplay systems the same way Uncharted took after Jack in terms of plot and Jack took after Crash. There is deceit right up until the end of the game, but it does still end with an air of hope, hope of the future. This played well into my life at the time, ready to move back to the big city and start university. I probably wasn't going to be killing anyone, but it gives you a chance to look at the harshness of the world, but also the good that can be found in it, even if our own world is not the apocalyptic state that The Last of Us is in. Although because this video is being made during the COVID-19 thing, there are lots of jokes being made about that. But the reason I've been mentioning how I used to consider maturity as just sex and violence is because 19 years old is not the peak of learning. No age is really, but three years on your own can make a difference. Just like that, we're out. All right. Check it out. Huh? <sighs> Naughty Dog fucked up. They ruined it. The Last of Us didn't end up being a straight trilogy with a racing game. It's all messed up. In all seriousness, I was really happy to return to Uncharted. A series that took me through high school had returned a high school's year's worth of time later. At this time, I'd lived with my girlfriend for a few years, and we'd been on our own for a while. Well with roommates. I bring that up because Uncharted 4 is closer to what I think of when I picture maturity now. The world is still an unforgiving place, but there is good in it. Adventure, excitement, relationships and the tribulations they go through, introspection, doing things for someone other than yourself. Some of this existed in The Last of Us too, but Uncharted's lack of extreme brutality and cynicism meant that mature concepts exist outside of just sex and violence. Time to tell that to my teenaged self. Now, there is an amount of nostalgia I had going into Uncharted 4 that I wasn't terribly happy with. Many people might find it odd to hear, but I hate the feeling of nostalgia and I wish I could do without it. Although that's a whole other topic of its own. Point being, it did remind me a lot of growing up. It even has the Crash Bandicoot section in the beginning, which took us full circle. From Crash at 6 years old to playing Crash in Uncharted at 22 years old. Without going too into it, I did not do particularly well in university, and the years between 2013 to 2016 were pretty rough for me. Life wasn't as fun as I sure thought it was going to be, and having to look at myself and the mistakes I'd made was uncomfortable. What was comfortable, despite my mention of nostalgia, was returning to Uncharted. That aforementioned introspection and focus on Drake's relationship with Elena helped a lot with my own struggles. My girlfriend and I hadn't had any major bumps like they do in the game, but spending a lot of time together can put a strain on things. It takes a calm and present mind to fight through that and focus on what you can do better. It was bittersweet though, as the game's closure capped it all off and the story was over, but a developer still has to make games. <laughs> Soon, The Last of Us 2 will be out. I suppose the flip-flopping between it and Uncharted means I'll never get that kart racer. Maybe they'll do a joint one for both games. Or hey, maybe they'll be added as characters in the remake of CTR. I'm 26 now, which I think means I've learned everything about the world. But really, it is interesting for me to look back on how I felt about things at these ages, and how Naughty Dog's games seem to line up with those portions of my life. To be fair, maybe I would have felt that about any company I kind of followed along with, but I think there is truth to their growth. Of course, companies are a lot more than one person. The founders haven't even been there since the first Uncharted, so you could say the maturity is a result of the people that came in, or maybe they were hired because their maturity was trajecting that way. I have to wonder how true all of this would be if Grand Theft Auto 3 never came out. Would Jack 2 have had to be so much grittier? Would the lack of mature Jack mean Uncharted doesn't come out? Or was it Naughty Dog's natural trajectory regardless, simply because they as a company have to grow and mature just like I do, and the rest of their player base? I'm not sure. All I can tell you is I'm looking forward to The Last of Us 2 and Naughty Dog's future franchises. What kind of growth am I expecting for myself at 26? Well, I initially went to university for astrophysics and always wanted to be an astronaut, so I suppose the next logical step for Naughty Dog has to be space exploration, yeah? Hey! It's almost been a year since my last video. Who would have guessed I'd have such a long release gap? Speaking of which, my Princess Mononoke video marks my first to reach 10,000 views, pretty much doubling my second most watched. 
Meanwhile, my last video has 600. Watch it, damn it. I know the title isn't the greatest, but I can't change it because I reference it in the video. Oh well. That said, as my school year ends, I'd like to try to focus more on these videos. I've said that before, but with the COVID-19 quarantine stuff happening, seems like now is a good time for people to be watching YouTube videos. Hopefully, I can help. Like always, if you'd like to take the conversation further, my Discord link is always open, and you can talk to me about anything on Twitter, I guess. If you want me to be able to do this a lot, I do have a Patreon. Either way, thanks for watching my content if you're still here, though few people do end up at this point. I'll tell you the meaning of life at this point of the next video, so make sure to stick around. Till next time.